Welcome to an abandoned vehicle test facility in Buckler's Forest, Crowthorne. The 102 hectare site opened in 1966, but its story begins a few decades earlier and about 20 miles from here. In Harmonsworth, Greater London, where we find the remains of another abandoned vehicle test facility, it was on this site in 1933 that the government established the Road Research Labs, an organisation that would conduct safety tests and research projects within the automotive sector. Today it's easy for us with our standardised road layouts and road signage etc, but back in the earlier days of motoring it wasn't quite so simple because none of that had been invented. Even the road numbering system that we know today had only come about a decade earlier in 1923, so we can see why the government thought it sensible to set up an automotive test facility. They tested all manner of things from road surface construction methods to road sign design and junction layouts. In 1939, a small disagreement would occur and the Road Research Lab's attention would be turned to other projects. Most notably, it was the site at Harmonsworth where development work on the bouncing bomb was carried out. They constructed model dams and pretend lakes to help with the early research of this novel munition. If you don't know how the story ends, it turns out that they worked rather well, causing much death and destruction. Hooray! Following that small disagreement, the Road Research Lab set its sights on improving pedestrian and road safety because whilst blackouts had been somewhat essential for the last few years, they'd led to a spike in pedestrian deaths on the road. This then led to the development of the Zebra Crossing, which was first tested at Harmonsworth before being unveiled as the new safe way to cross the road in 1949. Lots more boring testing and projects would ensue, but by the 1960s it was decided that a larger site was required to allow for a greater variety of test scenarios, so they chose to bulldoze a load of forest to make way for their 102 hectare test facility. Which brings us back to Buckler's Forest in Crowthorne and the new much larger testing site for the Road Research Labs. Here they could test on a much larger scale with a focus on traffic management and junction design. For example, roundabout traffic efficiency was measured by gathering what must have been 100 cars or so and driving them around endlessly until the roundabout reached a point where it no longer functioned. For such a test, they would have used this area known as the PAN, a huge open circular space that could be used to test all manner of things. Interestingly, it was rarely used as a traditional skid PAN and was more suited to testing things like road layouts or, as we mentioned earlier, roundabout traffic efficiency. If we take a look at this satellite photo from 2013, we can see one of the last tests they carried out still set up. I couldn't say exactly what it was they were testing, but clearly it involved Dutch-style roundabouts, a roundabout that features a cycle lane. These are not a common sight in the UK. Maybe their testing showed them to be a bad idea, or maybe they're just awaiting installation all over the country. Over the years, this site has tested every conceivable thing that you can think of relating to the transport world. I'd be here all day going through the list, but a report released in 1971 gives us an insight into the sort of things that they were getting up to. For example, motorway noise barriers now installed up and down the country on various sections of roads and motorways. Research into a tracked hover train that could travel up to 400 kilometers an hour, automated or driverless cars, and they even put together a mock channel tunnel train to test the most efficient way of getting vehicles on and off. And this was all in the early 70s. The report also makes mention of testing road charging systems or pay-as-you-drive. In short, even back then it was very possible to implement. In the mid-1990s, the organisation was privatised and became known as the Transport Research Laboratory. Over the next two decades, the site was scaled back, with much of it falling into disuse. That said, research was still carried out on site, predominantly vehicle safety and crash tests for manufacturers. Looking back at that satellite image, into the southeast of the PAM, we find a single building with a track leading through it. This was a guide track where you could bolt in a vehicle and propel it at speed. This photo shows the results of such a test. In 2012, the site was earmarked by the local council for redevelopment, who accordingly set about constructing 1,000 homes on a large portion of the site. The Transport Research Laboratory were confined to just a small area, however I don't think they minded because the maintenance bill on their large vehicle test facility was getting out of hand. It's what no doubt led to them happily agreeing to the site's redevelopment, meaning the test facility is no more. However, there are still bits of the facility that have escaped demolition now open for us to explore, such as the Bank Curve, a short section of test track that was used for high-speed vehicles testing. It's said that the bank curve was designed for speeds up to 155 miles per hour, however one source suggests that no one ever drove round there at that speed because there was a 100 mile per hour speed limit on the track. The banked curve is all that remains of the Ovalish track, but it wasn't just a track. Don't forget, this was a test facility, and on one of the straights, according to satellite images, there used to be a 
an underpass somewhere around here, and I don't know if you can see it, but this tiny square in the road. That tiny square is a window or glass pane, and the underpass is access to a small test area found underneath the carriageway. Here, a camera would be positioned facing upwards, and as vehicles drove over the glass window, it would record or photograph the tyre treads, I assume for tread wear analysis, but isn't that just fascinating? I could be wrong, but I think this drain cover marked highway is the location of where that glass window or glass pane was, meaning underneath is probably the remains of that test area that sat underneath the carriageway. Hiding amongst the trees are what's left of various test roads. At one point, this would have been a crossroad junction where they tested traffic light signals. More recently, they were testing those little cycle traffic lights that you see popping up everywhere now. I'm on my way now to find Hill Start Hill, and you'd think that this was a hill to test hill starts. However, my research suggests that whilst that could be the case, it was mostly used to test blind summit testing. Whatever the situation, what you had was a man-made hill with three different approach roads offering different gradients for testing. Two out of the three roads have now been cut off and at the top of the hill we find a picnic area. An interesting feature that still survives is the number three observation tower. There used to be four in total but it's only this one that remains. It was used to observe the various experiments on the site and also played a vital role in fire prevention. With the vast majority of the site being covered in trees, early detection was a key strategy deployed from the towers. Today this one sits fenced off and rotting away. I imagine it won't be long before it's removed because safety. It's staggering to think that most of the automotive infrastructure and the way that we do things likely started out as a project at the Transport Research Labs in Pokey Old Crowthorn. I suppose we take all of that for granted, but at some point somebody sat down and compared the different font sizes on road signs to see which was best. These days, while similar research is no doubt conducted at other sites, the requirement for large testing facilities seems to have disappeared, most likely backed by the need for housing and the expenses involved with operating such a site. But at least some of the facility still remains, giving us the freedom to explore and imagine the exciting yet important things that used to happen here shaping the way for the future of driving thanks for watching